care about understanding garbage collection. When you're programming in Java, Java is supposed to take care of it for you. What is it that you need to know and why should you care? I like to use a story that I call the story of the Julia garbage collector. And this is a true story uh, that we ran into this. And it pertains to the reason to understand a little bit about what garbage collection does. And um, I classify a good architect first and foremost by their ability to encode their work. Because if, if you make the right design decision but you can't get anybody on your team to make those actually translate into reality, you're not an architect or a philosopher. And you, you first have to be able to make people do stuff and then you have some hope that they're going to give you the right stuff. So a good architect is measured by whether or not they can impose what they want on, on any one project. And early in our history of building Collectors, we ran into a project with a good architect. And um, that application that we ran into was actually showing 18 second problems in our progress collector, which is kind of like Google. Um, so we went and we dug in to figure out what's going on. And we found out that uh, the collector was doing tens of millions of finalizations every one you see the image uh, uh, collection. And, and since then, by the way, our collector Finalization was still a top of operations for us. So we went to look inside and see why is this application generating so many finalized objects. Um, and we found out that every single class that was written in this project for a period of a year and a half had a finalized version. Every single class we wrote, good architect, can you guess what the finalizer was doing? Um, Putting our knowledge in every <laughs> It was doing this to help the garbage collector because, you know, why make the garbage collector work hard by having pointers that are not all? Let's put a finalizer in there, let the object clear it out, make it easy. Okay? Now, I use this example because this is actually an example of a good architect imposing their will. And this is exactly the right discipline to use in C and Garmin, which is fairly because if you don't destroy your objects and unlink them or reference them or down in your destructors, you don't have to take that problem. You need to do it systemically and work so well. It's exactly the wrong thought way to handle things from the garbage collector's point of view. So at the very least, you need to understand that if the garbage collector does things automatically, it does not need your help. And if you try to help it, well, on every other day, you know, you're stuck with 10 seconds of progress and that's no good. So hopefully that gives you some context the why. Um, corollaries from that is, you know, basically solving PC problems is an interesting challenge in itself. You can get very good at it. It's not that you can't. Good engineers will figure this out. But you need to be careful and you need a lot of practice and you need a lot of experimentation to figure out what really does work. Hopefully you'll learn some basics here that will help along the way. Um, but um, even if you're able to do stuff like code responsibly or do what people call heat-friendly code or heat-friendly data, um, you have to keep in mind that you're living in a big ecosystem and you, you have other people programming next to you and you might be able to hear from yourself as well. And you have to ask yourself, if you're going to choose a discipline that is different than the normal, does that mean you only use your code and not like nobody else does? Does it mean that you depend on code of your own other programs? And it's kind of hard to do. Now, there are examples of ways to deal with garbage collection. Every one of these has their place. They're not bad or wrong. Object pooling is the right thing to do for database connections. The wrong thing to do for anything. Um, Top heap storage. Very useful for certain structures, especially block structures or certain canopy behaviors. But probably not right to do for code base. Uh, distributed heaps are very interesting when the heap is that you need to deal with as a terabyte of data or maybe a petabyte of data, but not very likely a good thing to do with the megabyte. Um, and mostly, if you go down these paths of applying these solutions to garbage collection as part of your application, you're going to end up doing more than garbage collection than anything. Maybe it's a problem that the garbage collection core is just simple and caching, and maybe you're going to end up with other problems. Um, the other thing is that 
just like that example I had, um, most of what you intuitively know about garbage collectors is often wrong. So for example, garbage collectors are often much better at what they do than the people who give them credit for it. So for example, allocation is the most efficient and the least costly in the garbage collector, moving garbage collector of garbage. There's no cheaper way to allocate a new object than in a situation where all you have to do is bump a thing and throw it away so that the object is out of the way for reasons. And in that sense, Java is faster at allocating objects than a now that's just much better. Um, the other thing that's interesting is it costs us absolutely nothing to find good objects. We don't need any help. And we don't spend a single CPU per cycle looking at them. If we're looking at them for issues like flip modes, we'll dig in. We can get transfer on super efficient transfers of that. And this last one is we don't need to help the collector figure out where to place stuff is. It's going to find everything that's there. That includes circular things, lists, and weird graphs. And we don't need to put knowledge in this thing. Don't worry, it's going to figure it out. And we'll go if we want it. So, in many ways, it's much better than people think. But in other ways, it's actually much worse. So, yeah, no matter what they tell you, this thing will typically cost for a second per life gigabyte of data. And all you can do in most VMs is make that happen in a swap. Not really much. Another one is that um, just because there's automatic memory management doesn't mean there are no memory leaks. It'll keep what you have and it'll forget what you forgot. But if you actually grow your data sets, you're going to have to deal with it. Simpler than in other languages, but still there. And this last one is very important. New people need to tune, you figure out how to solve your problem after spending half the day on tuning, but you've most likely done a sweep to the dust deep under the carpet. But it's still there, and if you look 21 minutes into the 21 run, you might see the value from bushy pillow for that.